Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I'm going to explain you a very important topic. So there are a lot of you who have a very doubt, especially those who are freshers and are going to join the company in the after your graduation. So a lot of you have one very common doubt, which I'm going to discuss and clarify in this video. And I hope you are going to enjoy this video a lot. So if you do enjoy my videos, do like my videos, subscribe my channel and do share my videos and keep supporting me. So uh, many of you are there who wants to know what is the difference between the CTC and your in hand. So let me explain to you. CTC is the uh, short form of cost to company. So what does it represent? It represents that how much the company is going to spend on you total. So that is, so CTC is basically how much the company is willing to spend on you. So what is the in hand? In hand is not that CTC by 12. So CTC is, uh, CTC is usually given as per annum. So like XLPA per annum. So what many of you do is that you will divide it by 12. So like you are getting it for one year. Suppose you are getting XLPA CTC. So you do that by 12 and that is going to be in hand. But that is not how it is calculated. So, there, so that is the basic difference between the CTC and your in hand salary. So what happens is that CTC has got a lot of components in it. So, so one is your the basic salary which you are going to get. Then there is your uh, house, there are a lot of allowances like house rent allowance, uh, leave travel allowances. Then there is uh, the what you call the medical insurance, the insurance allowances. Then there are a lot of other, you know, you know uh, the things which the company gives you. Uh, there are some other allowances also, maybe some transport allowance or internet allowance, work from home allowance, or maybe allowance for, you know, for buying things which may be useful. For example, desktop, uh, you know, for table chair. So there are a lot of uh, uh, allowances. And then also in CTC, it includes, it includes things like your, say, joining bonus, your stocks, gratuity, your provident fund deductions. So there are a lot of things which are included in the CTC and that is the total package which is told to you. But in hand is not that uh, X by 12 as I've already said. So for example, suppose you have got a, a job of 12 LPS CTC. So what does that mean? That means the company is willing to spend up to 12 LPA total in one annum on you. Now, are you going to get that means are you going to get 1 lakhs per month? No, that is not the case. So let me explain to you. Suppose you are getting 12 LPA is the CTC. Now, suppose 9 LPA is your fixed and 3 LPA is your variable. So what? 9 LPA is fixed, 3 LPA is variable. So what is this variable? So it can be your variable performance. So suppose you do extremely well, so you get the entire 3 LPA. Suppose you perform marginally, then you get say 2 LPA. So this is variable pay, which is based on how well you perform in the company. How are you contributing to the project or to the company? So depending on that, that is you are going to get that variable pay. So maybe you do not get the entire 3 LPA. So even though you have been hired for 12 LPA, but you're not getting entire 12 LPA. So your variable pay, so as it is as it is in the name variable, so the pay is also variable depending on your performance. So that is the variable pay. Now what is the fixed pay? The fixed pay is 9 LPA. Now this has got several subsections. So for example, the, uh, the out of this fixed pay, the base salary is 1 lakh. Uh, I said 9 LPA. So suppose the, I'm, I'm just taking for an example, say the base salary is say 5 or 6 LPA. Then you have certain gratuity. Now gratuity is not given as part of your monthly uh, salary. So what happens gratuity is given suppose if you have worked for four or five years in the company then at the end of the after that the lump sum which is accumulated over the years that is the company is going to pay when you leave the company or maybe the employee provident fund. So these are certain deductions which are done from your fixed pay. So suppose around uh, 3000 to 4000 deduction is done monthly from your pay for the provident fund. So again that is deducted from the fixed pay. So you had 9 LPA fixed uh, from, from that again there are a lot of deductions as I've already mentioned. Then there is there are stock bonuses, there are a lot of other bonuses. So this 9 LPA will again further decrease to say 7 or 6 LPA maybe for example I'm seeing 6 LPA. So 6 LPA is going to be an enhanced salary and that means you're going to get 50,000 per month so that is going to be an enhanced. So you had been originally hired for 12 LPA CTC which stands for 1 LPA 1 lakhs per month. 
but that is not the case you are actually getting 50000 per month because this deductions are there so what is in hand salary i hope you have understood it is gross salary that is the salary which is mentioned to you minus the deductions minus the taxes so if you are incoming above a certain threshold then you also have to pay tax to the government so this tax is also uh, deducted from your gross salary so gross salary minus your whatever bonuses whatever uh, things you are going to get whatever uh, like the insurance stocks bonuses uh, or any of that sort of allowances so any of the special allowances all these are deducted and the taxes are deducted and finally what you get is your in hand salary so in hand salary is always less than your ctc this thing you have to keep in mind that in hand is always less than your ctc in hand cannot be more than ctc because ctc is the maximum which the company is willing to spend on you so yes this is the basic difference between the in hand salary and the uh, the ctc now all companies have their different policies so some companies may have a certain number of allowances all companies may not have all allowances some company may have less allowances some company may have more allowances so when you get a job it is always advised to you that you should go through your offer letter and see that how much is your actual in hand salary and how much is their bonuses and the other uh, deductions which are there because that is what happens is that suppose you said i am getting a 20 lpa package so you will not see that how what is the in hand you are going to think that no it is 20 lpa by 12 but that is not the case so you should actually see that what is the in hand which you are getting so from the next time when you are getting a job do for do not forget to check your offer letter and see what is the deduction for your salary break up so that is basically the salary break up which is mentioned in every offer letter so i hope that this video has been informative to you and if you want to know even any extra certain things related to this topic you can definitely mention it in the comment box below or you can dm me on instagram or on telegram or on anywhere and i'll definitely reach out and answer your doubts so i hope you have enjoyed this video and if you have enjoyed this video please do like my channel subscribe to my channel like my video share my videos to your friends and keep supporting me and and do support me a lot because your encouragement is what forces me to do even better you know so yeah thank you guys very much and see you in the next video